Diver in distress! It's the worst case scenario for any diver, yet many continue to insist that it could never happen to them. Unfortunately, even the most careful, well-equipped and experienced divers can find themselves in trouble. I've been diving over 30 years. I've done well over 4,000 dives. Uh, I've dived recreationally, I've dived commercially in the offshore oil fields. Uh, and all this time, I've never had the slightest symptom of decompression sickness, not even a joint pain or a skin rash or an itch. Anyway, I started making my ascent and uh, I actually managed to complete all my decompression. I didn't uh, miss any stops at all. So the fact this came on like this and uh, everything, as far as I'm concerned, the dive went absolutely perfectly and everyone's looked at the profile afterwards and have agreed there's absolutely nothing wrong there at all. It uh, just comes out of the blue and hits you. It's, it's very hard to accept it. When divers go underwater, they carry air cylinders. It consists of 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. When divers breathe from their tanks at the surface, they're breathing air at the same pressure as the atmosphere. As they go underwater, the air goes into their lungs at a greater pressure and becomes more concentrated. The dissolved oxygen is rapidly used up by their cells, but if the diver comes back up to the surface too quickly, any dissolved nitrogen can form a bubble. Any trapped bubbles in the body's tissues can cause serious damage. The administration of oxygen may encourage these bubbles to dissolve back into the blood and leave the lungs normally, as well as benefiting any damaged tissue. The long-term outcome of each case is very dependent on getting expert treatment in the shortest possible time, an area where the DDRC excels. Decompression illness is generally caused by bubbles either in the blood or the body's tissues, which can cause symptoms depending on where in the body they are. The chamber's like a, a big, well, boiler housing, as some people have compared it to a small bus, um, and the pre we increase the pressure inside that cylinder and that squashes the bubble down whilst giving the diver oxygen to breathe, and the oxygen helps flush the inert gas out of the system. Often the casualty will have been rushed by the emergency services to the DDRC as time is critical. The team are always on standby. I was very worried to start with because I really didn't think I could walk again. And I was so disorientated and feeling so ill that really I was just hoping that somebody could fix me quickly. <laughs> did they live up to that? They did. They were extremely good. And one thing I will always be grateful for is I kept my wife fully informed. I mean, obviously I had known mates who've had bends and things, but I never realised a bend could be so bad. And having a facility so close was excellent. There is no typical case. Symptoms can occur immediately after a dive, several hours later, or even longer if the diver flies too soon after enjoying the delights of a tropical reef while on holiday. One of the frustrations we often hear is that, well, I've done everything by the book, I've looked after myself, I've been sensible, but they've still ended up with, with a decompression illness. And that's really because clinically what we see doesn't always translate necessarily to what the textbooks say we should be seeing. One thing we do know is that the sooner you can treat somebody, then generally the better the outcome will be. So if a diver's ever in any doubt that something's not right after a dive, coming up for an assessment with a diving doctor is really important. A phenomenon that's, that is widely recognised is this process called denial. And whether it's a symptom of decompression illness itself or whether it's because of perceived pressure from the diving diver's peers, it's not known, but that can lead to late presentation and people sitting at home hoping things are just going to go away, and they don't, and then often it's harder to treat when we do finally see them. To add to the difficulties, research at the DDRC is suggesting that some divers may go into a state of denial rather than accepting that they have decompression illness. I do a lot of diving and dive with a lot of different people and I see people who've got, fairly obviously have got symptoms and uh, they think I'll go home, have a hot shower and it'll go away or perhaps take a couple of aspirins or perhaps breathe a bit of oxygen on the boat. Whereas really what they should be doing is thinking, this isn't right, this is symptoms of decompression sickness. They should ring the relevant people, i.e. DDRC, and get advice.
The expertise at the DDRC has now been vital in the recovery of more than a thousand divers. Well, I did a, an excellent dive and it was no, through no fault of my own that I had a bend. So a bend can happen to anybody at any time. And without the DDRC, I feel like there's a strong possibility I wouldn't be walking today.